hey guys welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here you're welcome to sue with mediva and if you're a returning subscriber or a returning viewer thank you for sticking to my channel so in today's video i'll be showing you guys how i made this stylish two-piece set so the side of this top has a drawstring as you can see and the neckline is this stylish v-shaped crop neckline so if this is something you are interested in make sure to keep watching and make sure you watch till the end and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up leave a comment subscribe to my channel and share to your loved ones so let's jump right into the tutorial so for this two-piece outfit i made use of three and a half yards of african print fabric so for the top you're going to need about two yards of fabric and for the pant you're going to need one and a half if you're making a long pant you're going to need about two yards and i have the other materials here so we're going to start with the top part of this two-piece so like i said we're starting with the top part of this two-piece and i'm gonna have to cut out my fabric we're cutting out both the front and the back panels together so the front panel is in a fold of two while the back panel is also in a fold of two so to get the wideness of fabric to fold for this type of top since it's a cut together sleeve top you're going to first of all divide your shoulder measurements by two so mine is eight inches so that depends on how long you want your sleeve to be so for mine i want my sleeve to be nine inches long so i added nine inches to that eight inches to make a total of 17 inches so my fabric is 17 inches on fold i hope you guys understand so if you want your sleeve shorter you will not need up to that amount of fabric and if you want your sleeve longer you're going to need more than that and for the length of my top my top length is 28 inches and i added one extra inch for folding allowance you can make yours longer if you want so the first thing i'm going to do now is to mark out the neckline of my top so come over to the closed angle of your fabric and mark the wideness of the neckline mine is three inches which is okay for that style and the depth of the back neckline should be 1.5 inches so go ahead to connect the two points together this way so after that for the front neckline the depth is going to be 8 inches since it's a v-shaped neckline you can make yours 9 inches or even 10 depending on how low you want the neckline to appear and then from that point i'll come in by one inch and just connect it this way so from that one inch point i'm going to extend the line to meet the neck width this way so this is what you should have after doing yours so i'll come over to this open angle of my fabric now and come down by 1.5 inches for the shoulder slope and then connect it all the way to meet the neck depths after that the next thing is to mark the armhole measurements so my round armhole measurements divided by 2 is 8 inches and i'll add 1.5 inches to it because of ease and for the seam allowance so i'll just go ahead to extend that point in a bit after doing that the next thing is to take the shoulder to the hip line so my shoulder to my hip line is 24.5 inches I'll extend the line this way and on this hip line I'll mark my round hip measurements divided by 4 which is 11 inches I'll add 1 inch for ease and 1 inch for seam allowance to make 13 inches you can add 1.5 to 2 inches if you want your blouse very free so I'll go ahead to extend that line all the way to meet the armhole line this way forming a straight line so go ahead to mark your own measurements and connect it this way form a curve at that angle and extend the line all the way down so the next thing to do is to cut it out so we're going to cut out the back neckline first and then i'll add half an inch while cutting this shoulder area because of the joining allowance and then cut out the sides all the way down so i'll separate the front panel from the back and then i'll proceed to cut out the front neckline So after cutting out when you open up this is what the front neckline should look like you have something that looks like this and the back is just a simple neckline this way the next thing to do is to join these two pieces together on the shoulder so i'm going to place them right sides facing each other this way i'll match the shoulder points together and close it up using half of an inch when i'm done joining the shoulders i'll show you guys how to attach the collar so after closing up the shoulder area this is what it looks like the next thing to do is to work on the collar and to do that you're going to first of all uh, measure get the midpoint of the back panel fold the back panel this way and get the midpoint of the neckline so i'll go ahead to notch that point with my chalk and then i'll get my tape roll and just measure from that midpoint all the way down on one side so i have about 12 inches here so i'll just measure the other side to make sure i'm on the right track 
you're supposed to get the same thing so for mine i got 12 inches a so making a total of 24 inches so i'm going to add 8 inches to that 24 inches to cut out my um collar because you don't want to be short of fabric so you have to add extra to it so i'll add 8 inches to mine and go ahead to cut it out so i've gone ahead to cut out the fabric i'll be using to form the collar so i want the height of my collar to be 2 inches so this fabric i have here is 5 inches wide because this collar is going to be in a fold of 2 so i added extra um, one inch to it for the joining allowance so when i fold it into two this way i'm going to have 2.5 inches and i'll use the half an inch to join it to the neckline i hope you guys understand you can decide to make your collar smaller just depends on what you want so fold this fabric into two and mark the midpoint towards the open side so this point you just marked go ahead to place it on the back the center back neckline this way and then use your pin to hold it down so notice that this is the right side of my top facing the right side of the band and then use your pin to just hold it down to the neckline this way so when i'm done i'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side so notice that i ironed interface into this fabric for stability so use your pin to hold it down this way before you stitch it together So after that, I'll take this to my sewing machine and join this um, collar to the neckline. So go ahead to use half an inch to join the two together. So what I'm going to do now is that when I get to this edge, I'm going to come down by half of an inch. At this point, I'll make sure my stitch comes down by half of an inch. Make sure it stops there. And on the other side, to the same thing, I'll come down by half of an inch. So I'm going to start from this point and just stitch it all the way around the neckline using half of an inch so when i'm done stitching i will show you guys the next thing to do so after i stitch down the collar to the neckline this is what it looks like so like i explained earlier i stitched it down all the way by half of an inch so you can see that it came down the stitch came down by half of an inch from that um neckline so what i'm going to do now is to cut that angle opened so you're going to cut it open all the way to the collar let me show you guys what i'm trying to explain so this angle on this side you're going to just cut it open all the way to the collar this way make sure it doesn't get to the seam so after cutting open you see that you can easily pass the neck um the collar through the neckline this way so if done correctly your collar is going to sit beautiful this way on the right side so if it's not sitting very well you can go ahead to still notch that edge a bit inside you can notch it so on the wrong side this is what you should have the collar should be crossing on each other this way and then you're going to have this half an inch allowance on the wrong side for the fabric then you go ahead to stitch it together you stitch that half an inch allowance and the collar together all three i'm gonna have to use my pin to hold it down so after stitching together i'll show you guys what it looks like so after stitching down the collar this is what it looks like on the right side you can see how neat it looks now the next thing we want to work on is the turnover for the sleeve so i'm gonna have to cut it out and the wideness of the fabric is two inches in a fold and i've ironed my interfacing to it as you can see so i'm going to place the open angle of the fold on the wrong side of my sleeve this way and stitch it down using half an inch i'll repeat the same thing on the other side open angle of the fold on the wrong side of the sleeve and stitch it down so when i'm done doing that i'll turn it over to the right side this way and Show you guys what it looks like so after stitching that fabric to the wrong side of my sleeve i turned it to the right side this way and i ironed it so that it lays down this is what it looks like before so you're just going to fold it to the right side this way and iron it so the same thing for the other side fold it and iron it so the next thing to do is to close up the sides of your shirt so because of the drawstring at the sides i'm going to first of all finish up the base of the front panel and the back panel individually i'll fold it in twice and stitch it all the way down so after doing that then i will come over to the sides i'll fold in this sleeve now to the right side fold it in this way and then go ahead to close up the sides using my one inch seam allowance 
so i'll make sure to fold in that turn up sleeve to the right side before i close it all the way down so make sure you are folded in the base of the top first before you go ahead to close up the sides so i'll repeat the same thing for the other one fold in that turn up sleeve and then go ahead to close up the sides so when i'm done doing that i'll show you guys the next thing so guys i've gone ahead to finish up the base and also closed up the sides so another thing i did was to stitch down the allowance so i went ahead to stitch down the side seam allowance thereby creating the space where i'll be passing the loops to create the drawstring effect i hope you guys understand so this was the reason why i told you guys to finish the base of the front panel and the back panel individually so that you'll be able to create your drawstring casing when you are done so this is what it looks like so before i turn it over to the right side i'm going to notch this curved area so this is going to help um, the top sits very well on the right side that part will not appear squeezed or rough so after making small notches I'm then going to flip it over to the right side for you guys to see so after flipping over this is what it looks like let me just go ahead to arrange it out for you guys to see you can see how beautiful the neckline and the sleeve looks so this is basically all for the top part the only thing left is to fix the drawstrings on the side this is what the top looks like now so i'm going to set this aside while we work on the pants for this two piece so we're moving over to the short part of this two piece set and i have my fabric in a fold of two we're cutting out the front panel first so you're going to start by marking out a line at the upper part of your fabric which is going to be the waistline so this shot is going to have a waistband of 1.5 inches so i'm going to place my taper 1.5 inches above the starting line to mark the full length which is 20 inches the extra 2 inches is for the folding allowance so go ahead to place your tape row 1.5 inches above the starting line again and mark from your waist to your hip line mine is 10.5 inches and the next measurement is from the waist to the crotch depth so to get your crotch depth you're going to divide your round hip measurement by 4 which is 11 inches for me and i'm going to add 1.5 inches to it to make 12.5 inches for my crotch depth so after that the next thing is to come over to the hip line and mark your round hip measurements divided by 4 mine is 11 inches and i'll add 1 inch for seam allowance to make 12 inches so i'm going to mark that 12 inches on the crotch line as well and also on the waistline go ahead to use your own measurements and then connect all the points together with your ruler so after connecting the next thing is to mark the crotch extension and to get your crotch extension go ahead to divide your round hip measurement by four whatever figure you got divide it by four again so for mine i got three inches and i'll just go ahead to create a curve this way from the hip line so i'll go ahead to measure what i have on this crotch line all the way to the extension so i have 15 inches and i will get the midpoint which is 7.5 inches after getting the midpoint i would extend the line all the way to the full length of my pant so on the full length of the pant i'll go ahead to measure around my tie the place where i want the shot to stop i'll measure around the tie so take the measurements with ease if you don't want the shorts to be too tight at the base so for mine i measured about 24 inches and i'm going to divide it by 2 which gave me 12 inches plus 1 inch for seam allowance making 13 inches so i'm going to place 6.5 inches on one side and 6.5 inches on the other side i hope you guys understand i'll extend it down this way and then connect one side to meet the crotch extension and the other one to meet the crotch line this way after that the next thing is to place the round waist measurement so you're going to take this from the center front so my round waist measurement is divided by 4 is 8.5 inches plus 1 inch for seam allowance making 9.5 inches so mark your measurement and then go ahead to connect it all the way to the hip line this way so this is basically all for the front i'll come over to this front um, line and then come down by half of an inch so i'm going to connect it all the way to the side of the pants so let's go ahead to cut it out so let's go ahead now to cut it out so i'll not cut out the half inch of the waistline let's go ahead to work on the back panel so to cut out the back panel i've gone ahead to place the front on another fabric that is in a fold of two so the fabric is in a fold of two and i made sure to leave about two inches at the upper part and then some extra inches towards the crotch extension so we're not going to be having side seam allowance because we already added to the front 
so i'm going to come over to the hip line now and extend it by 2.5 inches smaller size can do 2 inches or 1.5 I'll do 2.5 inches for mine and on the crotch line I'm going to use the same crotch I used for the front which is 3 inches which is 3 inches so I'll mark 3 inches there and then I'm going to mark on the tie area I'm going to take 2 inches all the way down so this is going to be for the seam allowance on the inner part of your pant so I'll connect the 2 inches all the way to meet the crotch extension this way so I'll cover out the back crotch extension this way to meet the um, butt allowance. So cover it out this way and then connect it all the way up to meet the waistline forming a slant. So this is what you should have. So the next thing to do is to um, merge the waistline all the way up. So you just go ahead to form a slant line all the way to meet the back waistline. So after that, the next thing we want to do is to mark the zipper allowance of 1.5 inches. I'm going to mark 1.5 inches all the way down. I'll come down by 9 inches. So this is going to be the zipper allowance. So we did not add any allowance to the side of the back panel because the front panel already has side allowance. So let's go ahead now to cut it out. So let's go ahead now to cut out the back panel. So this is how you cut out the zipper allowance. So after that i'll cut out the waistline and also cut out the sides so i won't be adding any pockets to this pants because i don't want this video too long i have other videos where i have added pockets to pants so i'll separate them from each other now and then i'll take out the half an inch um allowance on the waistline i'll just proceed to cut it out this way so after that the next thing is to start joining the fabrics together so i'm going to start with the front part i'll place them right side facing each other this way and then go ahead to close up the crotch area using half an inch allowance when i'm done i'll do the same thing for the back from where i want my zipper to stop i'm going to join the crotch areas together all the way down so when i'm done doing all of that i'll show you guys what it looks like so after I joined the front panels together, this is what we have. So the next thing to do is to join the front and the back together. So I'm going to start with the crotch. So I'll match the front crotch and the back crotch together this way and just use my pin to hold it down. Then I'll take it to my sewing machine and use one inch to join it together. So I'm going to stitch all the way down, starting from the center and stitch all the way down on the other side as well. Stitch it down. So after that, I'll also close up the sides of the pant using the one inch I added. So after I'm done doing all of that, I'll show you guys. So guys, after I close up the crotch area, this is what it looks like. And I've also gone ahead to finish up the base of the pant. I folded in twice and stitched it all around. So the next thing we want to do is to insert the waistband. And to get the length of fabric you'll be cutting for the waistband, you're going to measure around the waistline of your pants. So start from the back panel and just measure what you have all around it. So for mine, I have about 37.5 inches um, after measuring. So I cut out a fabric that is 38 inches long. So the wideness of the fabric I cut out is 4 inches. So I folded in half an inch on both sides of the fabric. So when I now fold it into two now, I'll be left with 1.5 inches, which is what I want for my band. So go ahead to also iron your interface into the fabric. To give it weight so come over to the wrong side of your pants and place the right side of your band open up the allowance and then go ahead to stitch it all the way around it this way stitch the half inch allowance to the waistline so when you are done you're going to use it to close it up on the right side so when i'm done with that i will show you guys so after i stitch down the band to the wrong side of my pants this is what we have so go ahead to use the other one now to close it up on the right side and then go ahead to stitch it down, fold that seam inside and stitch it all the way around it so after that the next thing you want to do is to insert the zipper at the back so I've gone ahead to open up my zipper and I'll place the right side of the zipper facing the fabric this way and on the zipper allowance I'll go ahead to stitch the zipper in so I'll place the zipper on the um, zipper allowance this way making sure the right side of the zipper is facing the right side of the fabric and go ahead to stitch it down so I'm going to fix in the remaining part of the zipper into the pants this way so that when I'm done stitching it is going to appear like this on the right side. So I'll repeat the same process for the other zipper. 
I'll place the right side facing the fabric this way, folding the upper part and then stitch the zipper into the zipper allowance this way. So when I'm done with that, I'll show you guys the finished product. So after inserting the zipper at the back, this is what it looks like. And this is what the front looks like. So we're almost done with this two-piece outfit. Last and final thing I want to show you guys is the drawstring at the side of your top. So I've gone ahead to fold up the fabric and I make sure the fabric is half of an inch so that it can go through my casing and I stitched it at the upper part. So I'm going to show you guys how to pass in for one side. So you're going to use your pin just the way you do with your elastic band and then you pass it through the hole at the lower part this way. So you keep pushing the pin with the fabric into the hole this way until you get to where you want your fabric to stop. Let me flip it over to the wrong side for you guys to see. So on the wrong side now, I'll just bring out the um, rope at the point where I want it to stop and then go ahead to stitch it down there. And with that, you've created your drawstring effect when you wear your clothes. So this is all on how to make this simple two-piece outfit. I hope you found it useful and I hope you have learned something new today. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, share this video to your loved ones and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!